Chapter 1 Down the Rabbit Hole Alice was sitting with her sister by the river. She had nothing to do. She was bored. Suddenly, a white rabbit wearing white gloves ran past her. Oh, 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 I shall be late, the white rabbit said to itself. Then it took a watch out of its pocket and looked at it. How strange, Alice thought. She stood up and ran after the white rabbit. The next moment she was falling down a rabbit hole. Down and down and down she went. Along the sides of the hole there were shelves and cupboards. She took a jar from one of the shelves as she passed by. Orange marmalade, were the words on the jar. Alice opened it. Sadly, it was empty. Down and down and down she went. Dinah will miss me tonight, Alice thought. Dinah was her cat. Down and down and down she went. And now she began to feel sleepy. Then, bump! She stopped falling and lay on a bed of leaves. She wasn't hurt, so she stood up and looked around. She could see a long corridor and the white rabbit hurrying along. Alice ran after it as fast as she could, but the rabbit turned a corner and disappeared. Alice was now in a large hall. There were lots of doors, but they were all locked. In the middle of the room there was a glass table. On the table there was a golden key. Alice tried to open all the doors with the key, but she could not unlock them. Then she came to a very small door, only as tall as her knee. The golden key opened this door. But how can I go through it? Alice thought. It's too small, or I'm too big. I don't know which. Alice went back to the glass table. Maybe there's a key to one of the other doors, she thought. There was not another key, but Alice did see a bottle with a label. Drink me, the label said. Alice was a clever girl, and she did not drink from the bottle immediately. Instead, she looked at it very carefully. She looked for a label that read, Poison. She could not see one. So she opened the bottle and drank from it. She liked the taste, but she began to feel very strange. I'm getting smaller, she thought, and she was. She was getting smaller and smaller and smaller. If I don't stop getting smaller soon, she thought, there won't be anything left of me. Luckily, she stopped getting smaller just in time. Now I can go through the little door, she thought. Where is the key? She looked in her pocket, but it wasn't there. Then she remembered where it was. It was on the glass table. I put it down on the table when I picked up the bottle, she thought. She hurried back to the glass table, but now it was huge. She couldn't reach it. She began to cry. Then she was angry with herself. <laughs> I mustn't cry, she told herself. Crying won't help me. At that moment she saw a small glass box under the table. She opened it, and inside there was a very small cake. It had the words, Eat me, written on it. Perhaps if I eat a little, I will grow enough to reach the key, she thought. Then I can hurry to the little door before I grow too big. She picked up the cake and began to eat it. Chapter 2 The Pool of Tears Alice began to grow larger. She grew taller and taller until she could not see her feet. They were so far away. I can't see them, she said to herself. She often talked to herself. But I'll be kind to them. I need them to walk on. At this moment, her head hit the roof of the room she was in. Oh, how can I get out of here? She thought. I have the golden key, but now the door is so small. Or, I'm too big. I'm not sure which. I still won't be able to get through that door. She lay down on the floor and opened the door. She looked through it with one eye. There was a garden on the other side. Oh, I shall never get out of here. <laughs> she thought and she began to cry again. 
She cried and cried until she was lying in a pool of tears. If, if I don't stop crying, she thought, I shall drown in my own tears. They are already over my legs. <laughs> Then she heard the sound of footsteps. She looked up. The white rabbit was hurrying toward her. Oh, the Duchess will be so angry, he was saying. Ugh, I shall be late, and she hates to be kept waiting. Alice, who needed help, said, Excuse me, sir, but can you? But she never finished the sentence. The white rabbit ran off as fast as his legs could carry him. Well, Alice thought, This is a very strange place. Everything seems to be different. Am I different from what I was when I woke up this morning? I'm larger, but am I the same? Am I even the same person? I'm not my sister. Her hair is longer than mine. Do I know all the things I used to know? Let me think. Four times five is twelve, and four times six is thirteen, and four times seven is. Oh, no, that's all wrong. What about geography? London is the capital of Paris, and Paris is the capital of Rome, and Rome is. No, 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 that's all wrong. I must be someone different. Maybe I'm Mabel. She never knows anything. Oh, I hope not. She lives in a very small house and doesn't have any toys to play with. Oh, what can I do? <laughs> and Alice started crying again. Then she looked at her hands. She was surprised to see that she was wearing the white rabbit's gloves. How can I be wearing his gloves? She thought. He's much smaller than I am. Oh, I must be getting smaller again. And she was. She stood up and walked to the table. It was now taller than she was. Why am I shrinking? She asked herself. Oh, it must be because of this fan I'm holding. She did not know where the fan came from or why she was holding it, so she dropped it. She stopped shrinking just before she disappeared completely. But now she was so small that she was almost drowning in her own tears. She was soon up to her chin in salt water. Oh, I was so silly to cry so much, she thought. As she was swimming around, she looked for a way out of the pool. Then she heard a splashing noise. She looked around and saw a mouse swimming nearby. Perhaps the mouse knows the way out, she thought. I'll ask him. Excuse me, mouse, she said. Do you know the way out of this pool? The mouse looked at her, but it didn't say anything. Maybe it doesn't know English, she thought. I'll try French. Alice knew only the first lesson in her French textbook, so she said that. Où est ma chat? she asked. The mouse leapt out of the water in fear. Oh, Alice thought. I've asked the wrong thing. I've asked it, where is my cat? And mice are frightened of cats. I'm sorry, she said to the mouse. I forgot you don't like cats. Would you like cats if you were a mouse? The mouse demanded angrily. Perhaps not, Alice answered. But I'm sure you'd like my cat, Dinah. She's a beautiful cat and very clever at catching. Oops, sorry, I nearly said the wrong thing. We won't talk about Dinah or cats anymore. What about dogs? But the mouse began swimming away. Come back, please, Alice said. I won't talk about cats or dogs. Slowly, the mouse swam back to her. All right, it said. Come with me to the shore, and I'll tell you why I don't like cats and dogs. Alice swam with the mouse to the shore. She was pleased to be out of the pool, which was now full of all kinds of animals, some of them very strange. <music> Chapter 3 A Race and a Long Story There were many creatures sitting on the shore. They were all wet. I'll tell you a long story, the mouse said. By the time I finish, you'll be dry. He began telling everyone the most boring story he knew. It was full of long words that none of them knew.
It was all about people in history they did not know about. The story was very boring, and it didn't help to dry the animals. One of the animals was a dodo bird. He said, There's a better way to get dry. We'll have a race. Everyone agreed that this was a good idea. So the dodo said, Get ready. One, two, three, go. And they all ran off in different directions. They ran like this for half an hour. Then the dodo said, Stop. The race is over. Everyone stopped running. They crowded around the dodo and asked, Who, Who won? won? I don't know, the dodo answered. I think everyone won. Everyone must have a prize. Who, Who will, will give, give the, the prizes? prizes? All the creatures wanted to know. She must, the dodo said, pointing to Alice. What prizes have you got? Alice took some candy out of her pocket. It was a little wet from the salt water, but Alice handed them out. There was just one candy for each creature. But you must receive a prize too, the dodo said. What else have you got? Alice found a thimble in her pocket. Give it to me, the dodo said. She did, and then he made a speech about how good a runner Alice was and how pleased he was to give her a prize. Then he handed her the thimble. Alice thought this was very silly, but all the creatures looked serious, so she did not laugh. She said, Mouse, you promised to tell me a story. But the mouse did not want to and hurried away. Now he is angry, the dodo said to Alice. And it's all your fault. Alice thought this was very unfair. If I had Dinah here, she said, she'd go after the mouse and bring him back. And who is Dinah? A large bird asked. Dinah is my cat, Alice answered. She's very good at catching mice, and she loves chasing after birds. The creatures all quickly moved away from Alice now. I really must go home, a large blackbird said. I have lots of housework to do. It's time we were all in bed, a yellow bird said. Good night, everyone. The creatures all moved away, and soon Alice was alone. I really must not talk about Dinah, she thought. No one here likes her, even though she's the best cat in the world, and I may never see her again. <laughs> Alice started to cry again. Then she heard footsteps. She thought perhaps the mouse was coming back. <laughs> Chapter 4 The Rabbit Sends Alice on an Errand It was not the mouse that was coming back. It was the white rabbit. Oh, I am in such trouble, he was saying to himself. I cannot find my fan or my gloves. The Duchess will be so angry. She'll cut off my head. She often does this. Then the white rabbit saw Alice. What are you doing here, Mary Ann? he asked. Go home immediately and bring me a fan and a pair of white gloves. Alice was too afraid to tell him she was not Mary Ann, a servant. So she ran off. I'll try and find his fan and gloves, she thought as she ran. She soon came to a little house. There was a name on the door. W. Rabbit. She went inside without knocking on the door. How strange this all is. She thought, I'm running errands for a rabbit. Perhaps Dinah will ask me to run errands for her. She ran up the stairs into a little bedroom, and there she found a pair of gloves and a fan. She picked them up and was going to leave the room when she saw a bottle. It was near a looking glass. On the side of the bottle were the words, Drink me. I'll drink some, Alice thought. Perhaps it will make me grow again. I'm tired of being so small. She quickly drank half the bottle. Before she could get out of the little house, she started to grow. Soon she was so big, she could not move in the room. That was a silly thing to do, she thought. Why didn't I take the bottle with me and drink from it outside the house? 
Alice now had one leg up the chimney, an arm out of the window, and her head was against the ceiling. She was very uncomfortable. It was much nicer at home, she thought. I didn't get smaller and then bigger and then smaller and then bigger again. It was silly of me to go down the rabbit hole, but I really wanted to find out what was down there. And now look at me. She moved a little, but she could not get comfortable. Perhaps one day someone will write a book about me, she thought. Or I will write one when I grow up. If I grow up, perhaps I'll never be any older than I am now. That would be good. I don't want to be an old woman, but then I don't want to stay a girl and have lessons to learn. She looked around the room. I'm being silly. How can I learn lessons here when I'm like this? At this moment, she heard the white rabbit calling. Mary Ann, Mary Ann, where are my gloves and fan? Bring them to me immediately. At first, Alice was afraid. Then she remembered that she was now much larger than the rabbit. He couldn't hurt her. The white rabbit tried to get into the room, but he couldn't open the door. Alice's huge foot was against it. I'll have to go in through the window, she heard the rabbit say. She put her hand out of the window and pushed the rabbit away. There was a crash as he fell to the ground. The rabbit shouted, Bat! Bat! Come here! Where are you? I'm collecting apples, the voice answered. Alice thought Pat was probably the gardener. Come here and help me, the rabbit said. Tell me, Pat, what's in that window? It's an arm. An arm? How can it be? It's huge. It's a huge arm, Pat answered. Take it away, the rabbit demanded. I'll need a ladder, Pat said. And I'll need Bill to help me. Alice did not know who Bill was. She thought he was probably another gardener. I'll send Bill down the chimney, Pat said. He can push the arm from inside the house. Alice heard a noise in the chimney, so she kicked with her foot. There goes Bill, she heard a voice say. Catch him, someone! There was a lot of talking outside, and then the rabbit said, We'll have to burn the house down. If you do that, Alice shouted, and the whole house shook. I'll set Dinah onto you. There was a silence outside for several minutes. Then she heard the rabbit say, Fetch a barrow full. A barrow full of what? Alice thought. She soon found out. Little stones started hitting the window. They're throwing stones at me, Alice thought. She put one of the stones in her mouth. Immediately, it turned into a little cake. There's only one thing to do, Alice thought. I'll eat the cakes. It can't make me any bigger. So perhaps it will make me smaller. Whenever I eat or drink something, it changes my size. Alice ate some of the little cakes, and she began to shrink. Soon she was small enough to leave the house. I'll try and find my way back to the garden, she thought. She walked out of the little house. A large puppy was looking down at her. Alice was very frightened. If it's hungry, she thought, it will try to eat me. And then what shall I do? She saw a stick lying on the ground. I know what I'll do, she thought. She picked up the stick and threw it. Immediately, the puppy raced after the stick, picked it up in its mouth, and brought it back to her. She did this several times until the puppy was tired and sat down far away. Now I can escape, Alice thought. If only I could make myself a little bigger, I would feel safer. She looked around. The only thing to eat was a large mushroom, about twice her size. Maybe if I eat a piece of that, she thought, it will make me grow bigger. She walked up to the mushroom and was surprised to see a large caterpillar sitting on top of it, smoking a kind of pipe. <laughs> Chapter 5 The Caterpillar Gives Alice Some Advice Alice and the Caterpillar looked at one another for a long time. At last the Caterpillar took his pipe out of his mouth and asked, Who are you? I don't know, Alice answered. I knew when I got up this morning, but I keep changing. Explain yourself, the Caterpillar said. I can't, Alice said. 
If I could explain, then I would know who I am and what is happening. But I can't. Please understand. It's very difficult for me to keep changing my size. It's not difficult, the caterpillar said. Perhaps it isn't for you, Alice said. I know that you change into a butterfly. Don't you feel strange when you do that? Not at all, the caterpillar replied. Now tell me, who are you? Tell me who you are first, Alice said. The caterpillar looked at her angrily. She turned away. Don't go away, the caterpillar shouted. I have something important to say to you. What do you have to say? Keep your temper, the caterpillar said. Is that all? Isn't that enough? I suppose so, Alice said. But it's not very interesting. The caterpillar looked at Alice for a long time. You think you are different from who you were, do you? I think so, but I can't remember things, so I can't remember who I used to be. Repeat this poem after me, the caterpillar said. You are old Father William, the young man said. Alice took a deep breath and began. You are old Father William, the young man said. And your hair is very, very white. But you frequently stand on your head. Do you think at your age that is right? In my youth, Father William replied to his son, I thought I would hurt my brain. But now that I know that I don't have one, I'll do it again and again. You are old, said the youth, as I told you before, and you are now much too fat. But you turned upside down as you came through the door. Please tell me why you did that. I have answered your questions, and that is enough, Father William said to his son. Do you think I can listen all day to such stuff? Be off with you, it's now half past one. That's not right, the caterpillar said. It's full of mistakes. I'm sorry, I changed some of the words. I couldn't remember the right ones. For a few moments, the caterpillar said nothing. Then he asked Alice, What size do you want to be? Any size, Alice said. I just want to stay the same size. Do you like the size you are now? the caterpillar asked. Can I be a little larger? Ten centimeters is very small. It's not a good height to be. It's a very good height, the caterpillar said angrily. You'll get used to it. The caterpillar was silent again for several minutes. Then he said, If you eat from one side of this mushroom, you will grow bigger. If you eat from the other, you get smaller. That's all I have to say. And with those words, he disappeared. But which side is which? Alice thought. I suppose I'll have to eat a piece to find out. She broke off a piece of the mushroom and put it in her mouth. Immediately, her chin hit her foot. That's the wrong side, she thought. Now she was so small that she could not reach the mushroom. She leapt up and down and finally was able to take hold of a piece of the other side of the mushroom. She put it into her mouth and she immediately began to grow and grow and grow. Soon she was so tall that she could not see her arms because they were so far away. Her neck was longer than a giraffe's. What can I do? she thought. I can't stay this size. I can't get into that house over there, and I'm sure that's the way to the garden. She looked down. A long, long way away she saw the mushroom. I know what to do, she thought. I'll eat a piece from the side that made me small. And this is what she did. <laughs> Chapter 6 Pig and Pepper Alice soon grew to the size she wanted to be. She walked up to the front door of the house. She was going to knock on the door when a fish wearing strange clothes ran out of the woods and knocked on the door of the house. A frog opened the door. It too was wearing strange clothes. They were the kinds of clothes that the servants of a king used to wear. The fish held out a letter as big as itself and gave it to the frog. This is for the Duchess. It is an invitation from the Queen to play croquet. 
The fraud took the letter and said, This is from the Queen. It is an invitation to the Duchess to play croquet. Then he closed the door. The fish sat on the ground. Alice knocked on the door. The fish said, You're wasting your time knocking. Oh, why is that? Alice wanted to know. First, the fish said, I am on the same side of the door as you are. Second, they are making so much noise inside that no one will hear you knock. Then how can I get in? Alice asked. Well, the fish answered, if I were on the other side of the door, I could let you in. But you're not, Alice said. I shall sit here, the fish said, until tomorrow. This was not helpful. Then, suddenly, the door opened. A large plate flew out. It just missed the fish. I may sit here until the day after tomorrow, the fish said. How am I to get in? Alice demanded. The fish said, I think I shall sit here for days and days. Oh, you are useless, Alice said, and she opened the door and went into the house. The door opened into a kitchen. It was full of smoke. The Duchess was sitting on a stool, holding a baby. A cook was stirring a large pot full of soup. Alice sneezed. Achoo! There's too much pepper in that soup, she said. The Duchess sneezed, and so did the baby. The only creatures in the kitchen who did not sneeze were the cook and the cat. The cat was grinning. Why is that cat grinning? Alice asked. It's a Cheshire cat. That's why, the cook said. Pig! For a moment, Alice thought the cook was calling her a pig. Then she saw that the cook was looking at the baby. I didn't know Cheshire cats grinned, she said. I didn't know any cat could grin. They can all grin, the cook said. And most of them do. I don't know any that do. Alice said. Then you don't know much, the Duchess said. Before Alice could reply to this, the cook began throwing things at the Duchess and the baby. She threw everything she could find. The Duchess took no notice, but the baby started crying. Oh, do be careful, Alice shouted. You'll hurt the baby. You mind your own business, the Duchess said. If everyone minded their own business, the world would go around a lot faster. The Duchess now began to sing. Speak roughly to your little boy and beat him when he sneezes. He only does it to annoy because he knows it teases. The cook and the baby now sang. Wow, wow. The Duchess continued. I speak roughly to my boy. I beat him when he sneezes, for he can thoroughly enjoy the pepper when he pleases. Again, the cook and the baby sang, Wow! Wow! The Duchess now stood up and threw the baby to Alice, who barely caught it. You hold him, the Duchess told her. I must go and play croquet with the Queen. Alice held the baby. It made a noise like a pig. She looked at it carefully. It is a pig, she exclaimed. Alice went outside with the pig and put it on the ground. When she looked up, she saw the Cheshire cat in a tree. It was grinning at her. Can you tell me, puss? She asked. Where I should go from here? Where do you want to get to? I don't care, Alice said. Anywhere. Then it isn't important which way you go, the Cheshire cat wanted to know. You'll get somewhere if you walk long enough. What kind of people will I meet? Alice asked. The Cheshire Cat said, Go one way and you'll meet a hatter. Go the other and you'll meet a hare. They are both mad. I don't want to meet mad people, Alice said. We're all mad here, the Cheshire Cat replied. Are you going to play croquet with the Queen today? I'd like to, Alice said. But I haven't got an invitation. You'll see me there. The Cheshire Cat said, and disappeared. Then it appeared again, just as suddenly. What happened to the baby? It asked Alice. It turned into a pig, Alice told him. 
I thought it would, the Cheshire Cat said, and disappeared again, except for its grin. Then that disappeared too. Alice decided to visit the hare. If everyone was mad, it didn't matter which of them she visited. Chapter 7 The Tea Party When Alice came to the house, she saw the hatter and the hare having a tea party. They had a table in the garden. The mouse was sitting between them. It was asleep, and the others were using it as a cushion. It was a large table, and only three creatures were sitting around it. However, as Alice walked towards it, they cried, No, no room! No room! Nonsense, said Alice. There's plenty of room. And she sat down at one end of the table. Would you like some wine? The hare asked. Alice looked all around the table. There isn't any wine. She said. Then you can't have any, can you? The hare said. It was rude of you to ask me if I wanted some. It was rude of you to sit down without being invited. The hare said. The hatter spoke for the first time. Do you need a haircut? He wanted to know. Don't ask personal things like that. Alice said. It's rude. Why is a raven like a desk? The hatter asked. Alice liked riddles. I believe I can guess that, she said. Do you mean, the hare asked, that you think you can find the answer to that riddle? Yes, Alice answered. Then you should say what you mean, the hare said. I usually do, Alice said. And I mean what I say. That's the same thing. Oh, no, it isn't, the hatter said. Does... I see what I eat mean the same as I eat what I see? Does I like what I get mean the same as I get what I like? Asked the hare. The mouse woke up. Does I breathe when I sleep mean the same as I sleep when I breathe? It does mean the same thing to you, Hatter said, and the mouse went to sleep again. Have you guessed the answer to the riddle yet? The Hatter asked. No. I give up, Alice told him. I don't know either, the hatter said. Neither do I, the hare said. Haven't you anything better to do than ask riddles that have no answer? Alice asked angrily. I think you should tell us a story, the hare said. I don't know any, Alice said. Then the mouse must tell us one. Wake up, mouse, the hare said, and he pushed the mouse off his chair. And be quick. Before you fall asleep again. The mouse got back on his chair and began. Once upon a time, there were three little sisters. Their names were Elsie, Lucy, and Tilly. They lived at the bottom of a well. What did they eat? Alice asked. She liked to know all the details. Sugar, the mouse said. Is that all? Alice wanted to know. Didn't it make them ill? It made them very ill, the mouse said. Have some more tea, the hatter said. How can I have more? Alice asked. I haven't had any yet. She turned to the mouse. Why did they live at the bottom of the well? The mouse thought about this for a long time. Then he said, It was a sugar well. I don't believe there is such a thing, Alice said. That's rude to say that, the mouse said. If you don't believe me, then finish the story yourself. I'm sorry, Alice said. Please continue. Very well. The three little sisters were learning to draw, the mouse continued. Alice immediately asked. What did they draw? Sugar, the mouse answered. The hatter said, I want a clean cup. Let's all move down the table. They all moved down one place. The mouse said, They drew things beginning with the letter M. Why M? Alice wanted to know. Why not M? The mouse said. What's wrong with the letter M? A lot of very good words begin with M. There's mouse and moon and madness, for example. All very good words. How can you draw madness? Alice demanded. Oh, be quiet, the hatter shouted. You keep on interrupting.
Alice stood up. I think you're all mad, she said and hurried away. I'll never go there again, she thought. She walked quite a long way and then came to a tree. It had a door in it. How strange, she thought. She opened the door and walked through it. She found herself back in the hall with the glass table. She took the golden key off the table and used it to open the door that led into the garden. She was too tall to go through the door, but she had a piece of the mushroom in her pocket. She took a small bite from it. Soon she was small enough to go through the door into the garden. Chapter 8 The Queen's Croquet Garden Rose trees were growing at the entrance to the Queen's Croquet Garden. The roses were white, but three gardeners were painting them red. Be careful, Five, one of them said. Don't splash paint on me. His name was Two. I'm sorry, Seven bumped my arm. Don't blame me, Seven exclaimed. Don't talk. Five said. The queen thinks you should have your head cut off. Why? asked two. That's none of your business, said seven. Oh, yes, it is, said five. It's because he took the cooked flower roots instead of the onions. Alice interrupted the argument. Please tell me, she said. Why are you painting the roses? We planted white roses instead of red ones. If the queen finds out, we shall all have our heads cut off. At this moment, there was a lot of noise. The gardeners turned around and cried, The, the queen! queen! The, the queen! queen! And fell to the ground on their faces. Alice turned too. She wanted to see the queen. First, she saw soldiers. Then there were the queen's servants. Then all the queen's children. Then the queen's friends. They were all dressed like playing cards. Only one member of the group wasn't. This was the white rabbit. He was hurrying along, smiling at everyone. The last person was carrying the queen's crown on a cushion. There was a sign on the cushion that said, The King and Queen of Hearts. Alice did not know what to do. Shall I lie down on my face like the gardeners? She asked herself, but before she could, the queen was standing in front of her. What is your name, child? She asked Alice. My name is Alice, Your Majesty. Alice answered. She thought, I'm not afraid of these people. They're not real people. They are just playing cards. And who are they? The queen asked, pointing to the three gardeners. I don't know. Alice said. They are no business of mine. This was rude, and the queen suddenly became angry. Off with her head! She shouted. Nonsense! Said Alice. Stand up! She told the gardeners. They stood up. What are you doing here? We were, that is, one of the gardeners began, but the queen wouldn't listen. Off with their heads! She shouted. Alice picked up the gardeners and put them in a large flower pot nearby. Are their heads off? The queen demanded. We can't see any heads, one of her soldiers replied. Good. The queen turned back to Alice. Do you play croquet? Yes, Alice said. The queen walked on. Alice followed. Soon she was walking alongside the white rabbit. Where's the duchess? She asked him. Oh, she's in a lot of trouble, the white rabbit said. She was late, and the queen was angry, and then she was rude to the queen, and then. He could not finish his sentence. They were all now at the croquet ground. It was a very strange croquet ground. The balls were hedgehogs, the mallets were long necked birds, and the hoops were soldiers. Everyone played at once. The queen ran about shouting, Off with his head! Or, Off with her head! Alice looked around for a way to escape. She looked up and saw some grinning teeth in a tree. It's the Cheshire Cat, she thought. Now I have someone to talk to. The grin soon became the cat, and it said, Hello, how are you? This is a silly game, Alice said. Everyone is quarreling. The hedgehogs keep running away. My bird won't keep still. Do you like the queen? asked the cat. No, I do not, Alice replied. 
At this moment, the king walked up. Who are you talking to? he asked Alice. Alice pointed to the cat. My friend, the Cheshire Cat. May I introduce it to you? No, thank you, the king said. But it may kiss my hand if it wants to. I'd rather not, the cat said. That's rude, the king said. He shouted at the queen. Take this cat away! Off with its head, the queen said, without looking around. A soldier came forward to cut off the cat's head, but now there was only a head. There was no body. I can't cut off a head if there's nothing to cut it off from, the soldier said. The king said that anything that had a head could have its head cut off. The queen said, If you don't do what I say, everyone will have their heads cut off. Alice knew she ought to say something. She said, It's the Duchess's cat. Ask her about it. She's in prison, the queen said. She sent a soldier to get her. The cat began to disappear. By the time the soldier came back with the Duchess, there wasn't even a grin. Chapter 9 Who Stole the Tarts? I'm really pleased to see you again, the Duchess said to Alice. She put her arm through Alice's. Alice did not like being so close to the Duchess, who was very ugly. She also had a very bad temper, Alice remembered. At this moment, the Queen came up. The Duchess began to shake. A fine day, Your Majesty, she said. Go away or you will lose your head, the Queen said. You choose. She turned to Alice. Let's get on with the game. The game continued. All the time, the Queen was shouting at people. Off with his head. Or off with her head. The soldiers had to take these people away. This meant that there were very few hoops left, as the soldiers' bodies made the hoops. Have you seen the turtle yet? The queen asked Alice. No, your majesty, Alice replied. Then you must come and meet him, and he will tell you his story. She led the way. As Alice followed her, the king said, Don't worry, no one will lose their heads. It's only a game. I think it's a very silly game, Alice said. What's the point of it? What's the point of any game? the king asked. A game is just a little fun, that's all. Soon Alice came to where the turtle was sitting on a large rock. Its eyes were full of tears. Sit down, the turtle said to Alice, and I'll tell you my story. You mustn't speak a word until I say so. Alice sat down and waited for the turtle to begin. She had to wait a long time, but at last the turtle said, I used to go to school every day. So did I, Alice remarked. That's nothing to be proud of. Did you have electives? the turtle asked. I did. I had French and music as electives. But did you have washing? the turtle asked. Of course not. I didn't have to go to school to learn about washing. At my school, the turtle said, I had three electives, not just two. I had French and music and washing. Why did you need to learn washing? Alice asked. You're a turtle. You spend most of your time in the sea. What else did you learn? The turtle listed all kinds of subjects that Alice knew nothing about. Two of them were laughing and sadness. A crab taught me these subjects, the turtle said. How many hours a day did you have lessons? Alice asked. Ten hours the first day, nine the next, and so on, the turtle said. Was the eleventh day a holiday? Alice asked. Of course it was. And what did you do on the twelfth day? Alice wanted to know, but the turtle changed the subject. Alice was bored now, so she left the turtle and continued walking through the garden. She soon came to a large hall. The king and queen of hearts sat on their thrones at one end of the hall. Everyone was playing cards everywhere. The knave of hearts was in chains, guarded by soldiers. The white rabbit was standing next to the king and queen. He was holding a large piece of paper. Alice thought, 
This is a courtroom. There's going to be a trial. The king is the judge. He's wearing a wig. She looked around the hall for the jury. She soon saw them. Twelve creatures were sitting in a large box. They were writing in their notebooks. What are they writing? She asked an animal standing near her. They are names, the animal said. Why are they writing their names? Alice wanted to know. Because they don't want to forget them, the animal said. Alice did not think this was a good answer, but before she could say anything, the white rabbit spoke. The knave of hearts, he said, is charged as follows. The queen of hearts, she made some tarts, all on a summer day. The knave of hearts, he stole those tarts and took them all away. Members of the jury, the king said, is the knave guilty or not guilty? No, 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 your majesty, the white rabbit said. You mustn't ask the jury that yet. We must have the evidence first. Oh, yes, the king said. You're right. We must hear the evidence. Call the first witness. The white rabbit shouted, Call the first witness. The first witness was the hatter. He came into the court carrying a cup of tea. May I finish my tea, your majesty? He asked. When did you start your tea? The king demanded. The hatter looked around the court. He saw the hare and the mouse. I started my tea on the 14th of March, I think, he said. No, it was the 15th, the hare said. That's not right, the mouse said. It was the 16th. Write all that down, the king said to the jury. To the hatter, he said, Take off your hat. It's not my hat, the hatter said. Did you hear that? the king shouted. The witness is wearing a stolen hat. It's not stolen, your majesty, the hatter said. I make hats to sell. That's my business. You're wasting time, the queen said. Give your evidence or you'll lose your head. At that moment, Alice sneezed. Don't sneeze, the mouse scolded. I can't help it, Alice said. I'm growing again. I'm getting bigger. The hatter said, I'm a poor man, your majesty. Is that all you have to say? The king demanded. It's all I can remember, the hatter said. It wasn't very helpful, the king said. You may go. Who's the next witness? The white rabbit looked at his piece of paper. Alice, he said. Chapter 10 The Trial When Alice heard her name, she hurried forward. She forgot that she was now much larger and knocked the jury out of their box. I'm so sorry, she apologized. The trial cannot continue, the king said, until the members of the jury are back in the box, all of them. That's the law. Off with their heads, the queen said, but no one was listening to her. Everyone was looking at Alice. They were waiting for her to speak. They wanted to hear her evidence. What do you know about this matter? the king asked her. Nothing, Alice answered. Nothing, the king repeated. Nothing at all, Alice replied. That is very important, the king said. He turned to the jury. Write all that down. Excuse me, your majesty, the white rabbit interrupted. I think you mean unimportant. It can't be important. She doesn't know anything. There was a lot of noise in the court as everyone said, Important! And Unimportant! The king looked in his book of laws. Law 42, he read. All persons more than a kilometer high must leave the court. He turned to Alice. You must leave the court, he said. I'm not a kilometer high, Alice argued. You're two kilometers high, the queen said. I'm not leaving, Alice said. You invented that law. No, I didn't, the king said. It's the first law in the book.
Then it should be law number one. The king did not want to argue about this. He turned to the jury. Now you can decide if the knave of hearts is guilty or not guilty. The white rabbit said, There's more evidence, your majesty. I have a letter here. What's in it? The queen demanded. I don't know, the white rabbit told her. Who's it addressed to? A member of the jury asked. It's not addressed to anyone, the white rabbit said. There's nothing written on the envelope. He opened the envelope and took out a piece of paper. There's a poem, he said, but it doesn't make any sense. The knave of hearts spoke for the first time. I didn't write the poem, he said, and no one can prove that I did. Did you write your name at the end of the poem? the king asked. No, the knave of hearts answered. That proves you are guilty, the king said. Honest people sign their names at the end of poems they write. Everyone in the court clapped their hands. They all thought this was a very clever thing to say. The king said, Now the jury can. But the queen interrupted him. Tell him what the punishment is first, she said. Alice shouted, That's nonsense. You mustn't punish someone until you know that they are guilty. Keep quiet, the queen shouted at her. I will not, Alice shouted back. Off with her head, the queen shouted. You don't frighten me, Alice said. You are only a bunch of playing cards. She blew as hard as she could, and they all fell down. The next moment she heard a voice saying, Wake up, Alice. She opened her eyes. Her sister was sitting next to her. Oh, I had such a strange dream, she said, and she told her sister all about it. One day, when Alice and her sister grew up, they would tell their children about Alice's adventure in Wonderland. Playlet Alice in Wonderland Let's begin. Then I can say, Off with his head! He must be found guilty first, Your Majesty. Well, hurry up. I haven't got all day. What's he charged with? We ought to know that. The Queen of Hearts, she made some tarts, all on a summer day. The Knave of Hearts, he stole those tarts and took them all away. Exactly! Off with his head! Not yet, Your Majesty. You must hear the evidence. What evidence? The evidence you must hear. Yes, yes, but what is it? We shan't know until we hear it. What a waste of time. Perhaps we should hear what the witnesses have to say. Oh, very well. Call the first witness. Call the hatter. Call the hatter. Call the hatter. Do you promise to tell the truth? All of the truth and only the truth? How do I know if something is true or not? Tell the court what you saw. When? Tell the court what you saw. When? When you saw it, of course. Some people are really not very smart. Okay, I saw the sky. What color was it? Oh, well, it was probably blue, but it may have been gray or even green. Green? What's he talking about? I don't think he knows, Your Majesty. He's a hatter, you see. He makes hats. Hatters use chemicals to make the hats soft. The chemicals make them mad. Ah, that explains it. Off with his head, then. If he's mad, he doesn't need it. Call the next witness. Call the mouse! Call the mouse! Call the mouse! I'm afraid this witness is asleep. Then wake him up! Shout in his ear or something! There's a cat coming! Now look what you've done. That wasn't very clever, was it? It woke him up. That's what you asked me to do. 
Yes, but he's not here now, is he? He's gone down a hole somewhere. We'll never catch him. Call the next witness. I'm getting hungry, and the Duchess is making my favorite soup. Call the girl Alice. Call Alice. Call Alice. Do you promise to tell the truth, all of the truth, and only the truth? How will I know if it's all the truth? I know some things about a lot of things, but I don't know everything about anything. She's got a point there. I don't understand a word she's talking about. Off with her head! Perhaps, Your Majesty, we should try to understand her. I think she is probably the only sane person here. Oh, very well. You may continue, child, but don't try to be clever. We've no time for cleverness here. It weakens the brain. I think it strengthens the brain. It's stupidity that weakens the brain. She's got a point there. Anyway, to continue, how will I know that it's only the truth? Sometimes I forget things, and then when I remember them, I don't remember them exactly. What has this got to do with tarts? What has it got to do with anything? Off with her head! If you keep on like this, no one will have any heads. Then what will you do? Do you want to be the queen of a country full of headless people? She's got a point there. Whose side are you on? That's a very good question. Perhaps I can help you. Did anyone see the knave of hearts steal the tarts? What's that got to do with it? Did anyone see him eating them? He won't eat any more if he loses his head. I've had enough of this nonsense. You're only a pack of cards anyway.